Uh, hi, okay, I think guys, it's time to start. Uh, and thank you all for joining us today, this day at Masakari, uh, the project update session. And my, my name is Sampat, I'm the current PTL for the project. And uh, in this presentation, uh, Tushar, uh, who is one of the co-members of the team, will join for the discussion. And uh, those who are not familiar with the Masakari, I will give you some brief introduction about the project. Uh, this project is about for, to provide VMHA service in OpenStack, and uh, our main mission is to provide instant high, instance high availability service in, in OpenStack cloud, and which is automatically recovering VMs from failures. So uh, I'm not going to discuss further details here, and uh, I put some, some of the links we discussed same topic in previous summits and. If you go there, you can find the, the full 40-minute presentation about what is the VMHA and what are the problems we have and what, 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 what are the difficulties we try to address in this uh, project. And also, the, we have user story defined and a lot of uh, documentation work we have done in past uh, summits and a lot of community discussions we also had in past summits. Uh, you, you may find uh, those links in uh, uh, our wiki page also. And so uh, this is the, uh, the big picture of the, the whole architecture of the Masakari, uh, which has uh, the, basically it has three projects. The, the first one is the, the Masakari itself, which contains the, the Masakari engine and the Masakari API and other, all of business logics inside. And then we have the Masakari monitors, uh, which do the, the whole, monitoring part for the, the failures. Uh, currently we have uh, four types of monitors, which uh, the first one is the host monitor, which is gonna uh, monitor the physical host servers. And uh, if it detects the failure, it's gonna send a notification to the Masakari, and then Masakari engine will take care of the, uh, the recovery part. And the second type of monitor is the uh, process monitor. Uh, which monitor the, the important process for the, the VMs running, such as like uh, iSCSI daemon or any other process. You can, uh, you can configure whatever process you need to monitor in the process monitor. And the third one is the, uh, the VM monitor. We use the uh, QMEM process uh, to keep in notifi notifications to monitor the health of the VMs. And if something happens in the, like, for example, uh, IO, band overhead or something wrong happening in the VM side, then we can detect those uh, failures also. And the fourth kind of monitor is the quite new one, uh, which has landed in the, the previous release, uh, which we use the QMEM guest agent to monitor the VM uh, from the inside the VM, uh, monitor the VM from inside. So any application can pass the notification to the, uh, the Masakari through the QMEM guest, guest agent. Uh, it's kind of a pretty breakthrough for us because uh, since the beginning of the project, we had a policy to monitor the VM outside, just like black box, black box monitoring. And since that feature land, everything has been slightly changed. So uh, now we have a feature to monitor VM from the inside, and <clears throat> which is also configurable. So if you want to have the old back, black box monitoring, you still have it. And if you need to uh, put the need to look at into the VM so you still can configure it to that way have some kind of a wide boss monitoring also. And uh, so what, uh, what happened in the previous release is uh, we have two new projects, sub-projects, uh, which is the Moscari dashboard. So you have, now you have a nice uh, view with the horizon with about the, what was the Moscari, uh, the all the configurations, and you can see the notification in it. And also, we have the Ansible plugin, for you can now easily install Masakari. Plus, uh, only one part is missing. Uh, we are working on it in this cycle. Uh, I will explain it in the next slide, uh, what we're working on stay. And uh, the last cycle, we have new features uh, that you can, uh, we implement the workflow customization, then you can customize the recovery workflow. So, uh, for example, if you, uh, you can put some action in between the uh, VM evocation workflow, so uh, everything is documented and uh, you can find those documents in the Masakai documentation. And 
And this is the introspective monitoring, which I was talking about the fourth kind of monitor we have recently. So we use the QMM guest agent to monitor inside the VM. And also we have uh, DB purge support, so you can uh, purge the, the soft deleted records. And also uh, we were uh, covering the whole, uh, the community-wide goals also, uh, the mutable configs and others, uh, the other community-wide goals. And in this, uh, this 10 cycle, we have planned a lot of things. Uh, the first one is the, the notification feature, notification implementation. Uh, this is uh, kind of a, like uh, sending out the notification about what's going on inside the Masakari. So right now, we have no way to know what's going on. Like when we start the workflow, we only, they just only show us whether the workflow is running or error. So this feature will give you a nice idea about uh, the, what's the, what kind of works actually doing in the workflow, and I think uh, uh, Tusha will give you uh, more for the, uh, the details in the next few slides. And the second one is I'm uh, uh, working on the, the ironic instance HK, uh, which uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to try to implement these uh, volume based ironic instances and try to uh, create high availability instances using Masakari. And right now we're still discussing about. Uh, uh, how it should be the monitoring part and the record part is doing. And the fourth stone is uh, the most of the uh, Masakari basically default is the pacemaker. We're depending on the pacemaker to do the whole uh, the stone it and the, the fencing part. But uh, imp uh, with implementing this feature, you may be able to do the stone it via Masakari. So uh, this kind of a uh, forcefully shut down the node, or if you find any faulty action in the node, you can ask Masakari to do the defensive part also. And uh, this is the Ansible missing, pa missing part I was uh, mentioning last slide. Uh, this is about the installing Masakari monitors. Uh, we have some difficulties to uh, the configure how to install Masakari monitor with uh, configure the pacemaker and call sync and everything. And uh, right now we are working on it, and hopefully this cycle uh, we will be able to provide a full suite of Ansible plug Ansible to uh, install Masakari. And uh, so, uh, and plus, uh, yeah, this is, uh, we're going to deprecate the Python Masakari client. Uh, and we, we do understand that we, could, we will not be able to totally deprecate it because we have some features using in the, uh, the other places. So definite thing is CLI, we, CLI will be gone. And instead of that, we can use the OpenStack client. So uh, there'll uh, be no degradation of the features, but uh, that part of the code will be disappear in this brain. And uh, are we also going to support the Devil stack. And I think uh, some of, uh, yeah, the Muscat monitor is missing, and we're going to support that part. And also, uh, currently, we don't have any functional tests, and we, uh, some of our members working hard to add functional tests in the Masakari and the OpenStack SDK side also. And uh, the last one is the, we also, uh, I'm personally working on the OpenStack resource agent, which is uh, hopefully, if you're familiar with the, the pacemaker resource agents, some of the Adam space were maintaining this in the, the OpenStack Git repo. So we, we have this discussion about uh, having a new architecture for the OpenStack resource agents. So if you're interested in, you can, uh, Join with the, uh, the self-healing SIG, so we can discuss more further on this. So, I would like to uh, ask Tushasan to uh, give further introduction about the the, uh, the notification feature. Thank you. Yeah. So, in uh, Rocky release, we have added uh, Masakri dashboard, and uh, in Masakri dashboard now you will be able to see all the notifications which are currently running. But uh, from the operator's point of view, this uh, information that is displayed is not enough because it only shows the status as running. And some of the notifications could take a lot of time uh, for processing uh, because uh, it, it all depends on what kind of, how many instances are running on that particular uh, failed compute host and whether the instances are uh, booted from volume or images. If the instances are booted from images, it might take a lot of time, especially if the images are not cached on the compute nodes. So there is no uh, information, uh, enough information available to the operator to tell like how much time this uh, host failure uh, 
process will take uh, i mean uh, will take to complete basically so uh, we are going to emit a lot of uh, useful information that will help operator to provide all that information so before i just explain that let me just quickly uh, explain about uh, what kind of recovery methods uh, we support so uh, when you create a failover segment, uh, you can specify uh, four different types of uh, recovery methods. So the first one is auto. In case of uh, auto, uh, basically uh, NOAA will decide on which uh, compute host the instances should be evacuated. The second one is uh, reserved host. So when you uh, create a failover segment, uh, you'll be able to uh, add all the uh, compute host that will be part of the failover segment. And when you add the host, you'll be able to specify like this particular compute host is a reserved host. Uh, that means if that compute host is a reserved host, uh, operator will need to ensure that the compute service running on that compute host should be disabled. Then only they should add that host to the failover segment and uh, they can set that as a reserved host. The second one is uh, uh, the third one is auto priority. So in this case, uh, the host failure will try to uh, evacuate these instances and the compute host will be selected by the NOAA. And if uh, all the capacity is all exhausted, uh, then it uh, will try to evacuate it on the reserved host. So first it will try auto uh, recovery method and then it will try reserved host. And the last one is uh, reserved, which is uh, reserved host priority, which is exactly opposite to uh, auto priority. First, it will try to evacuate on the reserved host. And uh, if all the instances are not evacuated, then it will try auto, auto recovery method. So in this slide, I'm going to explain uh, what kind of information uh, will be available to the uh, operator. Uh, and in this particular case, I'm just taking example of uh, reserved host recovery method. So here you can see on the left hand side, uh, that particular uh, host is uh, uh, failed basically, and uh, that particular node has uh, eight instances, and, uh, and it's, it will basically try to evacuate this instance on this reserved host B. Uh, so the first uh, task of that reserved recovery method is uh, disabled source compute host. Uh, because uh, we don't want uh, any of the, I mean, since that host is still failed, uh, there is a possibility that node could come up in between. So we don't want any other instances to be launched on that compute host. So we want to, uh, so we uh, want to disable that particular uh, compute service running on that uh, source compute node. Uh, so that will be the responsibility of the uh, first task, disable source compute node. The second uh, task is uh, prepared HA enabled instances for evacuation. So in this task, um, we have provided a lot of uh, options, con config options, uh, to decide uh, what kind of host uh, instances should be evacuated. So there are three config options supported. One is uh, instance uh, metadata, uh, HA enabled. So as a user, I can basically set, uh, I want uh, this instance to be HA enabled. So as an operator, when I will create the instance, I will set this metadata. And uh, second one is ignored instances in error state. So if on this compute node, if any of the instances are in error state, those instances won't be evacuated on the uh, <coughs> resort compute host. And the third one is uh, evacuate all instances. So it will basically bypass uh, the first two con uh, config options. And it will ev evacuate all the instances irrespective to whether the instances are HA enabled or not, or whether the instances are in error state or not. So uh, this particular task will uh, just prepare the instances list that needs to be evacuated on the reserved compute host. The third one is evacuate and confirm. So in this particular task, it will basically start evacuating the instances in batches. Uh, <clears throat> so based on all these three config options, here I've just uh, depicted like uh, only this two, three, four, five, six, and eight instances will be evacuated. And uh, once the evacuation, uh, during this uh, evacuation, for, um, if any of the uh, instance, uh, any of the source compute host is part of the host aggregate, then it will first add that reserved host to the host aggregate. That will be part of this uh, evacuate uh, and confirm task. And after all the instances are evacuated, then it will enable the compute service uh, on the 
uh, resort compute side basically. It will enable the compute service of uh, resort compute host. <clears throat> and this will be the final picture that uh, operator will be able to see it on the dashboard. So all the instances uh, that are evacuated, uh, operator will be, see it, uh, will be able to see it here. And then uh, if, uh, if a user hovers uh, mouse on any of these uh, instances, then they will be able to see uh, the instances details. And uh, over here also we are going to add this link, view instance action, where uh, you'll be able to see uh, what kind of uh, actions uh, are performed on that particular instance. <clears throat> yeah, so this uh, this is already existing in uh, NOAA uh, dashboard. So here you can see that uh, uh, that instance is locked and then evacuation is in progress and unlocked. So all that information is shown here. And uh, that request ID part is very important here. So if any of the instances are taking long time uh, for evacuation, then with this uh, request ID, operator will be able to see uh, all the logs and figure out uh, if there is any trouble. Yeah, so uh, the previous slides, uh, I mean, this information will be available uh, on the dashboard. I mean, once you click any notification, then you'll be able to see uh, this graphical representation uh, in one of the tab of uh, notification. And uh, <clears throat> we are also going to show this uh, event uh, details uh, in Verbose as well. So all the three tasks, you'll be able to see here all information like which host was disabled, uh, and then uh, how many, uh, like the second task, prepare instances, you'll be able to see uh, how many instances will be evacuated, uh, how many are HA enabled, non HA enabled, how many instances are in the error state. And in evacuated and confirmed task, uh, you'll be able to see uh, the current progress basically. Like if there are like 10, 20 instances running on this, on this uh, compute node, then you'll be able to see all these details uh, uh, properly. So this particular view will, will give operator uh, idea what is currently happening in the background. Uh, that is uh, what we wanted to basically support in stand release. Yeah, so I'll pass the control to Sampat. Thank you, sir. And uh, this is the uh, last final two slides. And uh, if you want to give any feedbacks, uh, you may find us in IRC. OpenStack-Masakari. This is our official channel for discussion. And you may use also the dev mailing list with the prefix Masakari. And we also have weekly IRC meetings, and it's Tuesday for UTC. And if you would like to join the, the, the IRC meeting, and you, you, you find out like it's kind of like an epic time zone right now. So if you, if you wish to join, and Time zone is not matched for you, please ask. We, we can change time zone and like, find the in-between position for uh, convenient for both of us. And uh, you, can, you may find the agenda in, also in the wiki, and we also have the Masakai wiki. And there's a lot of information about the past discussion and uh, the, the collaboration with other projects and so on. And uh, especially for uh, new <coughs> contributors, there's the uh, this is the, uh, the information about how to contribute. Uh, we have two documentation, very nicely written documentations about uh, how to contribute to Masakari. But part of it uh, include the OpenStack how to contribute guide, plus some Masakari specific things. And uh, you, you may follow those documents or just ask us and like start the conversation and we would love to help you out. Just, just not developing Masakari if you want to use it and if you want to integrate it to your cloud, just come to us and ask any question. We would love to help. And uh, the next thing I would like to introduce is the self-healing SIG. This is uh, not, not only about Masakari. It's about uh, having self-healing in the OpenStack totally itself. So now we have a lot of members from different projects uh, uh, try to uh, discuss about the self-healing scenarios. And if you if you have any troubles or any uh, questions about self-healing and related to self-healing, please uh, come to the self-healing SIG. And we, we're gonna, we will start the meeting, bi-weekly meeting from next week. And you may find the details in the wiki page. 
And there's a lot of uh, discussions in there, including the Masakari. And I think uh, you may find a lot of good information about the, the self-healing and resiliency and HA staffs in the self-healing SIG. So uh, finally, uh, thank you all for participating in this discussion. Thank you very much. So we may still have some time for questions. So please, if you have any questions. Yeah, hi. Hi. Uh, I have uh, several questions. Uh, like, uh, OK, the first one. So in your presentation, you uh, showed that uh, you are uh, going to implement uh, notifications. Yep. And uh, does it mean that uh, you are planning to move uh, like interaction of master query monitors with uh, master, master query engine via notifications that not via API. So like when, uh, for example, host or instance fails, uh, nowadays uh, master query monitors sends uh, API call, API call, yep. uh, and then uh, I, API uh, like sends notification to Rabbit and uh, master query engine processes notification. Won't be it easier to like uh, that, uh, like host monitor or instance monitor send just notification to Rabbit without this step with API? Uh, I think uh, we still use the same notification mechanism, but this notification is different from the failure notification. Uh -huh. At, uh, the, this notification is uh, there's two types of notification in Masakari. The first one is the monitors and notification to Masakari like including the failure details. So the, what Tusha was discuss, explain is the notification about the, how the process are running, failure, failure processes are running, the state of the process. It's kind of like uh, when you, ha you have the same thing in NOAA, like MQ, you can submit the MQ with the details of the ongoing task. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, two different notifications. So we, we're not gonna change, we're not going to change this Notification model. Yeah, so Mascar monitors are still interacting via API, yeah? Yes. Uh -huh, okay, and is there any like uh, reason why just not to just send them to Rabbit as well? Yeah, so his question is Mascari monitor should bypass Mascari API and send that message directly to Rabbit MQ so that Mascari engine will pick that up and process. Oh, uh, right. you mean these notifications? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we don't have the feature at this moment. Yeah, but that is possible. <laughs> it's possible, yeah. Why we have not done that? Because we wanted to, uh, we wanted all the calls to go from a second API. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the next question is about Ansible plugin, uh, which you were uh, saying. Uh, as I know, uh, actually nowadays, uh, OpenStack Ansible uh, project has already Mascari role. And uh, implementation of uh, configuration and setup of master query monitors has been merged to, to master, I don't know, five days before the start of the summit. Yeah. So do you coordinate with this project or are you just writing something own, just uh, independent? I mean, we have contributed uh, simple uh, scripts for installing Masakari API and Masakari engine. Yeah. Uh, yes, Masakari API, Masakari agent, and Masakari monitors. Uh, actually, they are present in OpenStack Ansible. They were matched to Stein, like, uh, I don't know, in the, like five days before the summit. Okay, I mean, I don't have any information with me. I'll have to change. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry, me neither. Uh, I, I, I was uh, watching the call Ansible. Is it call Ansible you're talking about? Oh, uh, no, no. OSA, OpenStack Ansible. Like. Okay, I will check that out. Right. Yeah, okay. because we have some uh, pretty difficult issues about installing OpenStack monitors, Masakai monitors, because we have to complete pacemaker, pacemaker and pacemaker closing. Pacemaker configuration is the difficulty part. Installing Masakai monitor is very simple, but yeah. uh, we also need to check up with pacemaker as well, right? Oh, OK. OK. And, and uh, nowadays, uh, we are trying to uh, run Masakari on Rocky, and uh, it seems that uh, Python client is broken for it. Yeah, I think we fixed it. We have fixed it. Ah, already, yeah? Okay, okay. We are going to use backport those patches only 
we, we, we got it backwards. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. I think it's in on Twins, Rocky, and on Masters. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. Yes, and that's. Yeah, so if you have it, thank you. Uh, reach us, one of, any, any of us. So, uh, if you don't want to have any further questions, I would like to conclude the session. Yeah, because I think we have the next session. Yeah. Thank you very much.